we have a square and we have a circle, we can very easily combine those two. And it doesn't really look weird at all. When we take that square and we put it into perspective, suddenly things get a little strange, right? Because we need to somehow take this circle and make it look very circular while hitting the edges of the square, right? You know, the rule that we've developed in perspective is that anything you can put in a circle, you can translate into perspective, uh, or anything that you put inside a square, you can translate into perspective uh, using that square. But that doesn't really work with circles. Um, you know the other rule, which is that a circle in perspective is an ellipse. E an ellipse is a mathematically um, symmetrical um, shape. So that means that in each of these four quadrants that we've developed on a grid, you could take this arc and replace it, right? Um, and this is kind of tedious to actually do. I would, you know, in normal drawing, you just estimate your ellipse and it tends to work out pretty well. In technical drawing, you may have to measure everything out and try for a while to get everything perfect. The nice thing about sketching is that it doesn't have to be perfect. One thing you'll notice is that, you know, instead of this being a perspectival square, this now is a mathematical rectangle, right? So that creates a problem when we're using a box form to construct a vehicle. Because when we put in the wheels, right, we want we know that those wheels are on a cylinder, right? And if we're going to create those tires, we want to put the tires there within the box that we've created for the tires, right? And then we can cut off those tires and make a little axle for ourselves, right? And then we can put the vehicle, you know, on top of that, so on with the wheel wells and, and everything. Okay, but that doesn't that doesn't necessarily um, work every time. So you have basically three options, and the first option is definitely wrong, right? The first option, and you'll see people um, teach this, but it's incorrect and not particularly useful, is to use your x method. Put your center there, right? your full triangle and then put your perspectival center there and then your curve of your ellipse has to hit each one of these little points right and that's going to wind up with a funky looking ellipse because your tangent points of the ellipse aren't symmetrical and they don't obey the rule of the ellipse here right So in any given situation, the ellipse wins, right? That's just um, a matter of fact. So you basically have two options when, you're, when you've uh, laid out a, a um, perspectival rectangle. So you'll notice that um, your visual center, and that's what this X method is, you're trying to find a visual center. Is, has, uh, is just a little bit off of the center between these two points, right? So the actual center is right here, right? The visual center is right here. So they create a little disconnect. Then the other thing too is that the center this way kind of goes up at an angle, but that doesn't give us our perfect elliptical ax axis, right? So that just creates a little bit of problem. So one of the things you can do is you can say, well, this is the this is the um, mathematical center, and I can use that center for the ellipse. This point roughly is going to be, you know, the center, so I can draw my grid there, and then I can go in and I can use that grid that I've just created, and instead of hitting those points, I can just kind of hit these points on the new grid. 
So essentially what I've done is I've taken this ellipse right here, separate the axis like this and overlaid it onto my uh, rectangle in perspective or my square in this case. So that does work. That is, that is definitely um, an option. The other thing too to keep in mind is that if you're doing um, two wheels at once you can use a cylinder, right? And if you're drawing this car in perspective, right, and this is the this is the hood uh, section with the engine inside it, and this is your wheel well, you're going to create um, basically a cylinder that goes across from side to side. And you know we know about cylinders that when you take a long rectangle like that and translate it into perspective, you still have that axis, and your elliptical axis goes that way. It's really pretty simple. So the other option that you have is to draw out this rectangle, right? Knowing that your that your um, two tires are going to be like that. Draw your 90 degree angle, draw your axis, right? And then you can draw your ellipse here for your tire. But then remember that gravity goes down so this point right here is where your tire is going to hit the road right right there so that's just a bit of an awkward thing and then your car is going to go in perspective with this wheel well over it like that right and your so your engine compartment is going to go somewhere over here right it's a bit funky so Basically, you have this option right here, which is option two, which is your cylinder option, and you have option one. Um, doing this, doing it this way with the uh, X method and following following the X method here is, you know, that's your option A, but option A is wrong. Don't, don't do that. So, again, just to run through that, you have your perfect ellipse. overlaid on top of your rectangle right and then you also have your cylinder with its axis tilted overlaid on top of that square and either one of those is going to work for you um, it just they look slightly different in their effect because the ellipse is drawn slightly different and the angle of the, the axis is slightly different. So you just have to pick whatever is going to work for your project and whatever aesthetic you like. These are the two main ways of reconciling ellipses. Um, and then if you work at like a company and you're doing industrial design, they're going to have their standard between one of those. So, um, you know, there's no perfect way to do it. Um, but either one of these two approaches is going to work for you.